this separating tree dates back to the early days of construction in Scandinavia. It is to signify everlasting life. Uh, iron workers began attaching a flag to show their patriotism for the wonderful country that we live in. When we did the topping out ceremony for the hospital for the final steel beam, for me that really was a beam that was connecting the past with the present and the present with the future. This building is, is connecting generations of folks who have supported this hospital. It was really humbling being able to actually sign that beam. Um, I actually was by myself uh, when I was out there signing it and seeing the names of current employees, past employees, uh, employees who wanted to recognize loved ones. It really uh, was kind of emotional for me. My name is Jeremy Davis. I'm the president and CEO for Grandin Hospital and Clinics. Grandin Hospital and who we are and, and what we're about and what we're doing right now wasn't created in a day. It's, it's been created over a century of caring and giving and compassion. It built a passion and a purpose in my story, just having a facility that invested in us so much. When you're on the road and you're staying somewhere for a week trying to um, help your child who's just went through a major surgery, it's really hard. <laughs> I look back at it and going over the, the tough rural roads, like maybe when the freeway was closed and having to spend an extra night, having already spent 10 days in a hospital in Portland and just wanting to get home. Hi, my name is Haley Hulse and I'm a native here of the Grand Ronde Valley. And this is my mom, Lisa Hayes. I've had 21 surgeries in my 26 years. It's inspired uh, me to go down a path to become a rural physician. I'll be starting medical school this fall and have every intention of coming back and serving the Grand Ronde Valley as a future surgeon, specifically because of the care community that I've seen here. I remember as a receptionist looking at the wait time for some of the physicians here, specifically because they didn't have access to the OR in a nine month time period to a six or three month one. If we had extra facilities here, that could mean the difference of someone figuring out they potentially had colon cancer. Our tagline is big city medicine, hometown touch. And we want to rival those big city uh, hospitals with the sophistication, the tools and the equipment that we have. But we want to differentiate ourselves with that hometown touch. We really are taking care of our neighbors. My name is Chelsea Cassins. My name is Andrea Weimer. My name is Allie Jackson. I do see a lot of comfort the patients get out of recognizing the staff that's there. We're a family and we all work really closely with each other. And it's very much a team. The surgeons are talking to the patient, they're talking to your family members. It's a family at Grand Run Hospital and that goes a long ways. I've even had special peanut butter for my post-op. It's a whole different story here. I'm Stephen Pinther. We're in a time where many hospitals are closing or many hospitals are cutting back. Here, we're, we're a hospital that is building. We're a hospital that is growing. If we have facilities that can support a, a workforce who stays, it could really continue to grow the trust between patients and their local health care. My medical adversity would have been limited a little bit more with more access available. I'm Bailey Swales. Our OR right now is Basically one hallway, you wouldn't even be able to push two patients past each other in the hallway. I'm Terry Lewis. Our storage room is packed full. All right, my name's Corky Gillis. If we need a piece of equipment, we roll it across the hall or out in the hallway. We do have a storage facility that uh, I like to call it the Rubik's Cube. Because every time we need something, it's always in the back. My name is Jennifer Lahr. If central processing wasn't able to do their job, there essentially will be no surgery. Our decontam, which is where we clean all of our instruments, is not an appropriate size. It's very small, so it does get high in temperature. It can get up to like 90, 95 in there, so you're, you get very warm. Sometimes we get memorized by the building of something, you know, brick by brick, steel by steel beam, nail by nail, uh, wall by wall. But you often hear uh, in people's personal lives, it's not a house, it's a home. And we hope that when people come into this facility, it, it's not, doesn't feel like a hospital. We hope it feels like home. If we as an organization, if we as a medical community can give hope to our patients and to our community that they can 
live a peaceful and successful, well-lived life here in Eastern Oregon, then we've done our job. A couple years ago, I had my, I think it was my 11th knee surgery back in the Grand Ron Valley. I got to spend Christmas at home with my family and we got to stay here. Patients will have a private hallway where they're coming for surgery as it is right now. We have to take them down the public hallway from surgery center all the way to the ORs. They're in their gowns, they're in their beds. What you're going to see is just a lot more streamlined process. The more time you spend in an operating room, the more expensive it becomes. That time really does equal money. Very soon, I anticipate we will be one of five hospitals left in the state that is independent and non-governmental. That ability to have local control, local governance, money is spent locally, decisions are made locally. To be able to have that autonomy, really we're going to need the support of the community. And that community support, it's a vote of confidence. You might not see the direct benefit yourself, but future generations that are here are definitely going to see the benefits of generosity of the people now and be able to, to look back with hopefully grateful hearts and say I'm glad that they had the compassion and the drive to help make this a better place. The foundation has really facilitated the growth of this hospital and the community. The foundation is actually uh, supportive as far as grants and donations. If people want to find out more about our new operating rooms, they can visit the website at grh.org. All the information about the project is on there. And if anyone in the community wants to support me and my team, they can go to grh.org foundation.